Um, and I'm really, really proud to introduce our speaker of the month, Julianne Williams, who is a art director and creative addict. Um, he introduces himself as a German-American graphic designer, art director and creative living in Amsterdam. He studied graphic design at uh, Santa Fe University of Art and Design in the US and began his career as a brand designer working for Nike. Like who starts working for Nike at the beginning of their, their career, right? Um, in addition to working at other fashion brands and uh, the New York agency Ann Walsh, his interest in politics and activism led him to a role as a lead brand designer on Joe Biden's successful campaign for the 46th uh, president of the United States. He believes that relationships, both visual and emotional, are the backbone of design and the world we live in. And in addition to design and art direction, Julian performs as a spoken word poet, incredible by the way, a musician, and is an active part of the European ballroom scene. Work that. <laughs> so please give a warm virtual applause to Julian Williams. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, it's funny Welcome. to hear my <laughs> hear words about myself uh, spoken <laughs> back to me like that. Thank you. Um, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Yeah. Okay. Let me know if you can see. Perfect. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you so much, Luis, and uh, thank you, Creative Mornings Rotterdam. This is really wonderful. Um, and there's quite a, a lovely group of people here early on, uh, uh, what day is it? It's Friday, on a Friday morning. Uh, I really appreciate that. Um, yes, as Louis said, I'm a graphic designer. I'm an art director. I do a bunch of other things, sometimes too many things, but I can't stop doing creative things all the time. Um, and yeah, I'm here to talk a bit about my work, a bit about, um, some kind of like promises that I've made to myself throughout my career and my studies and uh, promises and things that I've learned from other people that I think are valuable to pass on um, to other designers and other creatives um, in the field as well. And I've kind of centered this around um, this kind of manifesto that I have for myself of good things and good people. And I'll get into what exactly that means to me a little bit later. Here's an ugly little graphic of important places and people and things and countries in my life. Um, I think it's a bit jumbled right now to go into detail, but yeah, so that's me. I'm Julian. I am a graphic designer and art director. Uh, I went to school in Santa Fe uh, at the Santa Fe University of Art and Design in the state of New Mexico in the United States. And when I was in university, I was a bit of a troublemaker. I was very into uh, graffiti culture. Um, that's kind of what got my start into creating things visually when I was a student, um, legally most of the time <laughs> doing the graffiti stuff. Um, but as I kind of like continued with my studies, I started doing more kind of like proper graphic design and becoming quite interested in specifically branding. And that led me to work with some really lovely nonprofits and NGOs in the city of Santa Fe. Uh, an example of one of them that I've had the privilege to work with for a few years is this place called Cooking with Kids, which kind of like sets up uh, local New Mexican chefs with um, children, teaching them how to cook and kind of like teaching them lessons about themselves. And I created their rebrand and it was a lovely little thing that made me realize like I love, I love doing like branding, but I also love working with people who are doing something good for their community. So that was kind of like my first jump into real professional design work when I was a student. But I was also making a bunch of crazy cool stuff at the same time and like honing my craft and figuring out how to use these programs that I wasn't too familiar with. So this is kind of how my work looked when I was a student, which was about mm, four or five years ago now, somewhere around those, those two numbers. Um, and then getting into kind of like my first introduction into like the proper, proper professional world. When I was a student, um, I had the privilege to be introduced to someone named Bijan Berahimi, who runs a fantastic, fantastic 
design studio in Portland, Oregon called Fisk. If you don't know about Fisk, they're like, they're some of the best in graphic design, in my opinion, in the world right now. Um, so I meet Bijan and he comes to my university and Bijan Barahimi was a intern at Nike and then he went on to work for Nike and then he opened his own studio. And he came to my university and they did this wonderful workshop where they had us basically just act like we were working at Nike and have us make a bunch of things for Nike. And I remember stressing so much about it when I was a student, I was really in my head and thinking, oh, I have to, I have to make this amazing, this amazing thing and, and, and just getting like really overwhelmed by it. And I realized like I needed to just like calm down and do what I do, which is make stuff that's interesting and that engages with people. And I guess I struck a chord um, because many months later, Bijan um, was working on a project with Nike and he contacted me um, and I was living in Mexico in the summer at that time. And he asked me to work on a project for Nike. Um, and these were the graphics that we made. I believe lots of them actually didn't end up getting used, but it kind of like piqued my interest to work for a place like Nike. Like I realized like I love doing this kind of work. This kind of work made me really happy and I was working with someone who I thought was really inspiring and awesome. Uh, this is Bijan who came and visited me in Amsterdam um, a few years after I moved here actually. So then I kind of start getting in my head like, oh Nike, like that's like a long shot, but let's go for it. So when I was a student, I applied for an internship uh, at Nike in the Netherlands and I got it. It was quite funny. I was uh, living in Santa Fe, New Mexico at the time. And at like four in the morning, I get a phone call from a number that I did not recognize. It was way too many numbers in it. And um, the person on the phone was like, you're going to come to the Netherlands and work for Nike. And out loud on the phone, I said, fuck. Cause I was like, oh my gosh, I'm living in New Mexico. I like, I'm, 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 in my, I'm 21. I, I have no idea about the Netherlands and I'm going to move to the other side of the world. Okay, let's do it. So I pack up everything that I own and move to, I actually moved to Hilversum first, not Amsterdam because that's where Nike's headquarters is. Um, and I start my internship and it was wild. It was like a relay race. I, was make, I was working on insane projects with incredibly talented people. And I really like it, the, the kind of like ethos that was told to me as a student in that Nike workshop was like, you just have to make things and, and not worry about it. Like just continuously like make stuff and then edit down. And that's kind of some of the stuff that I learned when I was an intern to just continue making things, present them to my team, go on. This is an example of some of the work that I did when I was an intern for Nike Running. At the same time, I was um, working on my thesis because I was in my last year of school. So I was doing Zoom video calling before it was cool. These are some screenshots uh, or some Snapchats that people were sending me because my professor actually like set me up as a TV in my thesis class <laughs> while I was over in the Netherlands. And uh, yeah, that was quite funny. And people were just making fun of me how I was just like TV screen for a whole semester really fun. <laughs> so then I finished my internship and I get hired by Nike um, and continue on to do some really fun, inspiring work. These are some graphics that were created during the World Cup uh, for Nike's Saudi Arabian team. Um, these are some photo shoots that I had the privilege of um, being part of the creative team for. Um, so it's doing all this amazing stuff, uh, work for people in places that I never thought I'd have any interaction in for my favorite brand in the world, uh, love Nike, live in the dream. Uh, and then I turn 22, 22, I think. And I get fired, completely canned, fired from my dream job at 22. <laughs> so I got fired from Nike. Um, and the reason for it, which now is fortunately very fun to talk about, um, is because I was asked to give a design talk. I hope this one doesn't end like how <laughs> that would end it. So I was asked to give this talk and uh, my Instagram has always been kind of like creative personal work, just personal designs that I make reacting to however I'm feeling or things that are going on in the world. And so I give this talk and I make this design based on that phone call I was talking about, how I got called and told you're going to come to the Netherlands and work for Nike and do all this stuff. So I took the word fuck and put a Nike swoosh on top of it and I posted it to Instagram and tag Nike. And I was like, oh yeah, I just finished wrapping up this wonderful talk. I come into work 
and they tell me, we have zero tolerance social media policy, we have to terminate your contract immediately. So this photo was taken, mm, I think three minutes after I found out I lost my job, just me in front of Cal Colin Kaepernick saying, believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. I love this photo. Now I love this photo. At the time, it was not a very fun time. Um, so obviously this really sucks for me, um, but looking back now, I think it was an important lesson to myself to not, not get too crazy, understand like what's going on in the world around me. At the time, it also really sucked because um, not only had I lost my job, but I also, um, I was looking for a new place to live. My housing contract had just ended. So I used, and I was 22, really dumb, not using my money well. So I used the last of my money to move everything that I have into a storage unit. I'm couch surfing and I'm trying to figure out what is going to happen now, what is next. I've just lost my job, my dream job, feeling at my bottom. And so this is kind of where the promise stuff comes into play for me. So at this time, I don't have any work and I'm just thinking about what I want to do. And I realize I love graphic design. Like no matter what happens, no matter what's going on, I know that this is what I'm gonna do. This is what I studied. And I'm fortunate enough to be one of the hands uh, like uh, a handful of few people in the world who do something that they love. I mean, hopefully a lot of people are engaged in a career or something that they love, but I knew design was for me and that was what I was gonna do. And I also made a promise to myself that whatever happened next, I, I was gonna solve this problem with design. So while I'm looking for work, I just go on graphic design overload and I start making things, just what just insanely random amount of work with no like brief and posting it online. Like this is a poster based on a poem that I read. That middle thing is literally, I, I was like, I'm gonna make up this fake alien language and design a rave poster for a rave on the planet Venus and post it on my Instagram. And that third thing is uh, a poster for um, the, the fall of the Berlin Wall. And so I'm just making random things. And the way I was kind of thinking at this time was, um, like design is gonna get me out of this. And though I'm not having work right now, I could make any of this stuff for people if it was a real project. And that's kind of something that I often tell people who are younger, like going into interviews, you know, the work is the stuff that matters. And obviously, I mean, I, I hope something like this happens, but I don't think I'm ever gonna get commissioned to make a rave poster for a rave on the planet Venus. But if I ever was, I'm ready to go and I can show people that I have this. So this is the kind of way that I was thinking about making work in this time while I was couch surfing, looking for work. And um, luckily I did find work. Um, I got hired as a, a freelance designer at Karl Lagerfeld um, with a wonderful team of people. Um, I got to do a lot of things I hadn't previously done before like art direct, a product photo shoot. Um, and they were really looking for someone to kind of like bring a fresh perspective onto um, the work that they were doing at that time for that season. And they kind of just let me run wild. And it was, it, I was really happy that prior to this, I had been creating all this insane random work because then when I had gone into this more like concise brand, I was able to be a bit more playful, but also a bit more controlled because I was not trying to get fired again. Um, yeah, and this is the kind of stuff that <laughs> I was making at Karl Lagerfeld. So I worked there for a few months and then I have a year where I'm just freelancing around. I'm continuing to make personal work. It's something that I, um, that I do on a regular basis that I think is very important to have this kind of like personal practice. I feel that that fuels the work that you end up doing for stuff like this, for real clients. Um, then about after a year, I am hired as a digital designer at Tommy Hilfiger. And um, this was really interesting because I again had an opportunity to um, kind of bring like my own ethos to a brand um, and do the kind of work that I wanted. So at this time I've established that going forward, I'm realizing who the awesome people are who I want to work with. I saw this at Karl Lagerfeld. A lot of the people who I worked with there knew people at Tommy Hilfiger. And so I figured, okay, I know good people here. There'll be good people there. And this like really established my idea of, I want to work with good people on good things. And I know it's not always possible to do that, but wherever possible, I'm gonna try and go forward and make that kind of work. 
So at Tommy Hilfiger, I'm a digital designer, but the team that I was there with uh, was really open to getting a lot of creative ideas from each other. I mean, we had designers and art directors who were also like taking behind the scenes photography and writing copy and giving feedback to each other. Um, and thankfully, um, they were asking me input on campaigns and stuff. And I saw an opportunity to um, give back to a community that I feel very strongly about and that I'm part of. So, um, oh, sorry, one second. Yeah, so when I'm not designing, um, a part of my life that is very important to me is ballroom, is voguing. Um, so I vogue in, uh, I've vogued in North America and in Europe. And uh, if you don't know what ballroom or voguing is, yes, can we get into that split that just happened for a second? I'm very proud of that split. Um, <laughs> ballroom is a, an expression of um, queer and POC communities now, thankfully, throughout the world that started in New York. Um, and the reason that I bring this up is because uh, this community kind of like allowed me to be more expressive with myself, to interact with people around the world who um, all relate to this kind of like expression. And the way this relates to Tommy Hilfiger is I was asked, um, basically people knew that I vogue in Amsterdam and I was asked, okay, who are, who, who are the people who we need to be talking to if we want to get people involved in some like work with Tommy Hilfiger. Um, and I was originally approached to be part of a photo shoot that was coming up, but I was like, I'm, I'm still rather new to the ballroom scene. No, I know the people who you need to talk to. So um, this, these, this photography features um, my friend Meraki and also Aitana who are amazing amazing vulgars who have been part of the ballroom scene in the Netherlands for a few years now. Um, they're insanely talented. And um, this, this was such a great moment for me because I had found this work where I was finally doing well. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't homeless anymore. I wasn't, I, I had a job and I saw an opportunity to give back and give some like, um, what is the right word? Some, like spotlight to this other community that had helped me like become more of who I am. Um, and so I basically told Tom Hilfiger, like, these are the people who you need to hire. Like, if you want to have awesome footage and awesome vloggers and work with some really interesting people and hear some good stories, like talk to them, not me. So I got them booked on um, this photo shoot and they had a wonderful time and they were really talking to me like, oh, I can't believe like they're they're driving us out to this place. We get to try on these clothes and they're paying us to be models. And I, I don't understand. I remember telling my friends like, you know, like you can do this stuff and, and they can't like, they, they, they need you more than you need them. And so just this idea of like good people and good work, I was, I was really happy that I had an opportunity to get my friends this kind of work. And this is something like outside the world of design that like is, is it's wonderful when you get to work on stuff like this. Um, it's also wonderful when things from your past like come back and people understand that you're doing kind of this kind of work and want to approach you again for that. So the beginning of this year I was working for Tommy Hilfiger and I was approached by um, the mayor of the city of Santa Fe in New Mexico during kind of the start of COVID to help design a literal promise. Uh, he approached me and said, we want to make something for the citizens of the city to promise that they're gonna take care of each other, that they're gonna wear masks, that they're gonna be there for one another in these difficult times. And so I made this design, which is based on the buildings of the city of Santa Fe, which are made out of adobe, this kind of like clay material and shaped it into a heart. And um, this was the branding that I proposed for this promise, the Santa Fe promise to be one city taking care of one another. Um, it went through a few design rounds. This was my favorite, but this was the one um, I did that they went with. And it was really nice. And I got to talk to the local newspaper and I was on phone calls with the mayor and also got me thinking like, oh, I really am enjoying doing this kind of work for people. Um, and then after doing that, um, I had something insane that I never thought would happen, uh, happen also during this year. Um, I was sitting on my couch and I received an email from Jessica Walsh who is a graphic, who's a designer um, and was co-creative director of an agency in New York called Sagmeister and Walsh with Stefan Sagmeister. And 
to me, these were like the rock stars of graphic design. I mean, these were people who, when I was 17, I was like, I want to be Jessica Walsh. I want to be Stefan Sagmeister. And when I was a student, I was trying to, um, I was, I, I sent like a few emails for internships, didn't hear things back. Sometimes I heard something back and just be like, oh, it's not the right time. But I was sitting on my couch and I get an email from Jessica Walsh saying, hey, do you want to be our intern? And I jumped like 10 feet in the air and was like, I can't believe this. So um, I worked with Ann Walsh as an intern and then a freelance designer for a few months this year, making the most insane, inspiring work with the crazy diverse, crazy talented group of people who were all incredibly smart. I just can't, I can't begin to talk about like the intelligence of the people working on the design there. Um, on projects that I just, I, I really like, I, I was working a lot at this time. I was still working for Tom Hilfiger at the same time, but I just love doing the work so much. And that is such an amazing feeling. And I also don't ever remember laughing so much while working on designs, which is also an amazing feeling. We created these um, like emojis based around stressful things that designers have to deal with, like people trying to pay you an exposure. So you have this little like dollar signs of exposure and stuff. And it was just so funny seeing like the ideas that people came up with and designing things, you know, just because like this wasn't something that was like commissioned by anyone for Ann Walsh to make. Um, and we're just making it just because we love design and we think that this is a funny thing to put out for other people to interact with. Um, and this was a cute little thing that someone else made that I love. So I work for Ann Walsh, I'm freelancing for them. And then I get another, another email that makes me jump 10 feet into the air. Um, a lot of jumping this year. Uh, creative advisor, Robin Kanner uh, for Joe Biden's um, presidential campaign sends me an email saying, hey, uh, we're looking for a graphic designer for the election. Yeah, for real, that spam folder is dangerous. Like check your spam folders. You never know when you're gonna get that jumping in the air email. Uh, yeah, I get a call. Uh, from Robin Kanner asking me if uh, I would like to talk to her about a position uh, working for Joe Biden for the election. At that time, um, it hadn't been announced that Kamala Harris was the vice presidential candidate. Um, it was just Joe Biden. Um, so I took some time, I thought about it. I was like, hell yes, I hate Donald Trump. Uh, I love the world. I need to do everything that I can to get this asshole out of the White House. I thought it was very funny because in my in my interview, um, I was asked, how do you feel about creating content that attacks the president of the United States? And I was like, haha, not only am I 100% comfortable with that, but I've been doing it for years and I can do it quickly. So let's get to work. So I was hired as the as the brand designer and um, then I was promoted to lead opposition brand designer after about a month of working on the campaign. So my main role at that time was creating content that attacks the president. Um, talked about how he wasn't doing his job, about how people were dying, losing money, losing their jobs, how he didn't care about the country or the world um, during time of COVID. And I think that very first graphic on the left was the first thing I made that was posted to um, Joe Biden's account. And it's insane when you see the former vice president of the US like posting your work um, to attack the current shitty president which is really great. I mean, that was really like, wow, this, I'm in it, I'm doing it. Um, and then there were lots of opportunities for even more creative work and to create a kind of campaign that I don't think has been explored before. Um, and actually, hopefully will never be explored again. I mean, this entire presidential campaign uh, was done remotely. I was the only person working uh, for the Biden campaign who was outside the United States. And one insane thing that happened was this kid, this random kid, 16 years old, high schooler, created this Instagram account called like Team Joe or something, Vote Joe. Um, and he had amassed like 100,000 Instagram followers. And the Biden campaign bought this account from him. And we're like, okay, we need to do something with this account. We're going to try and make it our kind of like younger, more diverse thing that speaks to a wider audience. And I was just talking to my boss and she was kind of like, yeah, we're trying to figure out what to do with this. So I created this art direction and just proposed it. And they were like, yes, this is what we're gonna do. And this is what the language that was developed for the entire duration of the campaign. And we created rapid response content. Um, it was really, it was, it was really, I was really fortunate to work with a team that was also like so open to these kind of ideas. 
Um, and then weird, wild stuff happened during the election, like the night that, uh, so I'm working in Europe, everyone else is US time. So the night that that fly landed on Mike Pence's forehead, it was like 4 a.m. And all the content that we're designing is like in real time, like we have to make designs within like five minutes, less than five minutes of people saying stuff like concept, create the design, get it onto Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, so when the fly landed on Mike Pence, my boss was like, find a union source fly swatter and someone get this typography on the fly swatter. And the next day we sold literally thousands of fly swatters that said truth over flies. It became like a big thing on the internet and the Huffington Post like wrote, uh, so this is insane stuff that happens during this campaign. This is what happens when you promise yourself you're gonna work with good people on good stuff. You end up making fly swatters at 4 a.m. It's actually another designer who made the fly swatter, but very funny story. And then I got to do amazing things. Like I made these posters that were wheat pasted over, I believe five major cities in the United States in the last weeks of the election. And they were next to posters um, created by the artist Shepherd Fairies team, who was a huge inspiration to me in university when I was doing all this insane graffiti stuff. And we won, um, hooray, uh, thank goodness for that. It, it took a while to feel like we won even after November because you know the president was saying that it was a lie and stuff, but I really just want you to like look at this picture and these are the people who I worked with on that campaign. And to me, like, this is, this is amazing. Like to me, this one, this is what the United States looks like to me. Um, like uh, uh, people of all different colors of all different genders, literally all different genders and gender identities, um, sexual orientations, languages, backgrounds, like coming together and really fighting for equality, fighting for like a better country. And I got to do that through design. Um, and I feel very fortunate that I got to be a part of this campaign. Um, and it's only like boosted my investment in continuing to do like what I set out to do after I lost my job to make good work with good people. And so um, kind of coming to the end of all this, I, I feel it's important to like leave leave you with something, you know, I can, I can go on about my work and stuff for a while, but it doesn't matter. I feel if you don't walk away with something. So the things that I can give you um, are to understand that people matter. Like no one wants to work with an asshole, you know, like it, it, you just don't want that. Um, and the connections that you make hopefully come back um, to help you and others in the future. Maybe you get to be on a phone call with Cher and uh, two presidents of the United States. If you play your cards right and you're not a jerk, that was something that happened to me and I feel very fortunate. Cher is hilarious. She hates Donald Trump so much. Like, you know, she hates Donald Trump, but when you hear her like in real life talking about how much she hates Donald Trump, it's amazing. Um, so yeah, people matter. And then you get to see your friends in full outfits from this brand you work smiling at you. Um, that's really awesome that's like the real shit um something else i would say is learn to talk i understand that not everyone can like get up and just randomly talk about what it is that they do um but i think if you're a young creative it's so worth it to invest in like public speaking or talking to your friends about the work that you make it will come back to help you uh, you know because you can be the best designer or creative in the world, but if you can't talk to people, you can't talk about what you do, um, it's, it's not gonna help you that much. So I, I would definitely say invest in that. And um, the last thing, and may, to me, maybe the most important thing is to just make stuff. Like, don't worry about who you're making things for, it's, especially if you're a designer, just make things, one, because like, you love doing this. Like, let's remember that, that we love design, that we got into this stuff for a reason, um, or whatever it is you do. Um, and you don't have to get paid for it. Like I, I, I just love making work and none of, none of anything that's on my screen right now was made for anyone. It's just content that I make um, because I feel a certain kind of way or I think something's important or I don't think anything. I just want to like make something. Um, these are examples of work that I made reacting to stuff that I feel is important that happened since the election. And I will finish with a promise that, um, has been inspiring me recently um, and continues to do so. So this is my dad. He just turned 50 last year um, and he spent 30 years of his life uh, serving in the United States Army. 
And he told me he, when I was young, my dad was always drawing in sketchbooks. And he told me he joined the army when he was 17. So he could get money to go to art school. And he ended up just staying in the army. Well, he retired two years ago, the age of 49. And he decided to study graphic design last year. And this is me giving a talk to my dad's class. Um, that's him next to me, 50 years old. Everyone else in his class are like 18, 19 year olds. And um, he and his teacher invited me to speak to their class and uh, like talk about my work. So I'm really proud of my dad uh, for kind of, ooh, I'm like getting like a little, oh, <laughs> I haven't seen my dad in like two years. I'm really proud of my dad for keeping like his promise to himself to pursue the kind of stuff that uh, that he wanted to do. And I'm really happy that he and I get to continue to inspire each other with design and the things that we love. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> Oh my God. Wow. Julian, I knew you were incredible, but you <laughs> surpassed my expectations. Uh, and I can, I guess a lot of people relate because they're, <laughs> they're saying marvelous things about you in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Super nice. Um, now we're going to go into the Q&A session, a quick Q&A session for uh, everyone to to get an extra inside look at Julian's <laughs> head. Um, so if you have any question for Julian, please uh, add it to the chat and then we can address it. Let me check. Uh, Lodo, can you help me with the chat? Because... Uh, Joey raised her hand or oh. Dan, one of those two. Uh, hi, yes, thank you so much, Julian. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Um, I had a question, um, it's maybe a little bit obnoxious, but I was wondering, after you got fired, what did you say to your next employers? That, Thank uh, you. That's a great question. <laughs> um, I told them the truth. I, um, I was like, you know what, I'm 22. I really love what, I, what I'm doing. And the thing that I did was dumb but it wasn't wrong. Um, and that's something I talked to with my previous boss about as well, because they had to, they, because of company policy, they had to do what they did. It was really unfortunate. I was really angry at the time. I thought it was dumb, but uh, I, I remember that interview. I went into the interview with the head of marketing for Kyle Lagerfeld. She asked me, what was your last job and what happened? I said, I worked for Nike. To be honest, it's my favorite. It's my favorite brand. I really relate to that brand, and I got fired from my job for this and this. And it was funny. She's a, she was a German woman, and I was also kind of like relating to her because I'm German, speaking a little bit of German with her. But I was also laying it on a little thick with the like American, like yeah, this is what happened. Um, and I I was like, you know, if if someone has a problem with that, I I don't want to work for that person. I think that's something also very important to to recognize, like. Um, in, in, I kind of, I kind of related to like, I hate when people say like, oh, don't put smiley faces or exclamation points in in emails. If any, if anyone says that to me, I'm going to tell them like, oh, I, I should, I should be a bit more, a bit more PG-13. But I hate that kind of stuff, and I don't want to work with those kind of people. And I felt at the time I was like, well, if if anyone really has a problem with that, then I need to find work somewhere else. And also, I was just like, I'm just gonna be honest, like, this is what happened. And now I get to talk about it to a bunch of people. Uh, um, so that's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. Thank Amazing. you. Uh, do we have any other questions in the chat? I have uh, one uh, for you. So uh, do you have any tips for people to create or design or express their creativity during times of a lot of stress and uncertainty. I mean, your stories are packed with uncertainty and stress and still you manage to pull through somehow. Do you have any tips for our community? Yeah, I have two. Um, one is talking to talking and showing work to uh, other creative people. Like when, when I lost my job and I was making stuff, um, I was fortunate to be surrounded still at the time by creative people and I would just make things or talk to them about ideas that I had um, and whether I was going to do them or not. It was just interesting to get uh, a perspective from them about, about stuff. Um, you know, I think sometimes like when we're in, 
states of stress, we kind of like get in our own head. And it's good to hear like inspiring or not even inspiring stuff, just like shooting the shit with other creative people um, to kind of get ourselves out of that headspace. And the other thing I've been really into lately, I just finished um, a book about songwriting by Jeff Tweedy, the lead singer, frontman of the band Wilco, uh, who are amazing, about um, an exercise that he does is free writing, but just free writing, like writing, not worrying about anything, like writing the first things that come to your head, even if they don't have to do with anything that you want to end up creating. And then you go back and you kind of like review that, that work and maybe you pull a few words out of there um, that inspire you. Um, yeah, I think that kind of stuff is, is very important and intuitive. Amazing. Alex here has a question. Alex, do you want to unmute yourself and ask it yourself? Sure. Uh, so Julia, my question is, um, I also like doing, like believe in doing good work for w good people, but where do you draw the line? Because, so I'm not going to use Trump as an example because it's too extreme, but mm -hmm. let's say um, another politician you ideologically disagree with um, wants to uh, hire you to design, let's say, a poster or a campaign for them. And they tell you that if you do this, they will donate $100,000 to a charity of your choice. So what would you do then? Because to me, that's a point of conflict. It's like, mm. I would be working with somebody that I ideologically disagree with, but that would do a lot of good for people that need good done for you. I mean, what do you I, can, I can talk about this like half, for example, um, when I was approached to work for Joe Biden, I did, I did take some time, about a week, to really think about it. Um, mm -hmm. Joe Biden was not my first choice for President of the United States. Um, I, I, my, the candidate I voted for as a Democratic nominee was Elizabeth Warren. Um, but then I thought about the situation. I just thought about the reality of what was going on. I don't want Donald Trump to continue being president. I think that Joe Biden will do a much better job than any of the other options. And I think he is going to do a good job. Um, and I'm glad that I thought that way because upon joining the campaign, uh, you realize a lot of people who work on the campaign had come from previous campaigns. My boss, who became Joe Biden's creative advisor, had been working on Better O'Rourke's campaign. And the other senior designer on the team was a senior designer for Elizabeth Warren, who had been brought onto the campaign. So it was kind of this like melding of ideas of people who had come together for a greater good. That's the kind of stuff that you figure out and learn and realize when you work on things like the best social campaign. That's one side of the thing. But the other coin of, of kind of like the hypothetical that you just proposed, I mean, I, I feel like in that situation, I wouldn't do it like there are certain brands and artists and stuff who i i just won't do work for i think that like <laughs> and and also i i honestly think that you're you're messing up for doing that kind of stuff i had a close friend um who who did some illustrations for a, a rapper who um who was who i i mean it, this is a blanket statement but who i felt was not a good person We'd done some things um, that like, and not, not accusation or anything, who like on paper done terrible things to people. And I actually messaged that friend and was like, hey, are you aware of this? And it turned out that they weren't. Um, they, they didn't know, the, the, and, and sometimes it's like that, you know, sometimes, I mean, you, you should do research about your, the people who you're working for and stuff. But um, I can honestly say in that situation that you're talking about, I, I, I think I would not do the work despite them saying that this and this is because this is maybe a little looking like looking out for myself which isn't my main goal always but uh or, or i mean it, it usually isn't <laughs> isn't my main goal but just be aware that like that kind of stuff comes back to bite you in the butt you know and if you want to continue working with good people you, you got to do it all the time so yeah awesome thank you super interesting <laughs> Amazing. So, uh, is any anybody else uh, interested in asking a question, or we can wrap up the Q and A? Three, two, one. <laughs> Row. Row. No, I I saw a raised hand um, below me. Joey and Dan have a raised hand. That's what I saw. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Joey saying no. <laughs> no, <laughs> they already asked. Yeah. Uh, okay, then, Julian, thank you so much for being our inspiring speaker of the month. You're incredible. You know, I'm your fan. And now you have plenty of more fans from <laughs> from this from this session. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, can you write in the chat how can people uh, find you and connect with you? Maybe your website, maybe your Instagram, uh, wherever you uh, you want to be reached. For and, sure, hit me up on Instagram, y'all. It's the best. Mm, <laughs> amazing. It can so make now, you lose your job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now we're gonna wrap up. Um,